welcome to this free webinar. This webinar is going to be focused on bioinformatics for genomic medicine. And this is an opportunity to learn about both the future of medicine, but also to see how big data, computational biology, data analysis, curation, and interpretation are all very vital to the improved healthcare and a solution for the growing needs of patients and healthcare systems around the world. But today, we'll specifically focus on the opportunities in computational biology training and support for clinical research that we are launching in Africa to help a growing community of clinicians, biomedical researchers, university students, and industry professionals. For those joining us for the first time, my name is Ilya Brodsky. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pine Biotech. Our company vision is to enhance human health and well-being by enabling biological research and discovery with relevant data, solutions, and support. Our mission is to simplify bioinformatics and advance research through the modular and intuitive multi-atomics analysis platform that is powered by human experience and artificial intelligence. We offer training research support and big data analytics tools designed for biomedical discovery and our mission is to support the cutting edge innovative projects and solve big data challenges by developing innovative solutions that are easy to use and to provide training to use them effectively and arrive at sound and reproducible results. I'm honored to have been working at Pine Biotech with many others including Pine Biotech co-founders Dr. Alfred Tauber and Dr. Leonid Brodsky. Both of them come with years of expertise in oncology, immunology, virology, as well as bioinformatics and biostatistics. So what we'll discuss today is also a result of hard work by our growing team. Julia Panov, who is an expert bioinformatician, has helped prepare many of the materials that we will use. Avi Titievsky, who is a computer scientist and leads the development of the t for platform. Mohit Mazumdar, who is in charge of business development of Pine Biotech, Joshua McKendall, who maintains the educational web portal we will leverage, and Beepsa Biswas, our online community manager and support specialist, who I'm sure many of you had the chance to interact with already. Over the past several years, we have conducted a large number of programs at various university campuses around the world, working with faculty, researchers, and students to build a collection of modular coursework that cover the important data types, bioinformatics methods, and applications in bioinformatics. These include introduction to bioinformatics, genomics, transcriptomics, and other types of omics. And we have seen how they have helped many students build a great foundation for understanding how to apply these different technologies and methods of analysis that are useful in all kinds of biological and biomedical research. In fact, omics logic programs are a result of close collaboration between Pine Biotech, an innovative big data analytics company based in the US, and numerous academic institutions that have participated in content evaluation, curriculum review, and project design. As a result, the omics logic programs have been thoroughly tested and are known to lead to excellent outcomes for students and faculty interested in online training, leverages cloud-based technology to provide high-performance computing access and detailed training resources, making the learning interactive and practical. The platform offers a streamlined process from learning to the application of bioinformatics and life sciences. It is designed for those seeking to make sense of the big molecular data sets coming from next generation sequencing and wanting to leverage computational advances for processing, analysis, and integration of big data. These programs are designed to provide theoretical and practical training for those interested in the next generation sequencing data that is now becoming more and more accessible on a large variety of topics. In each program, you get to learn about this type of data, understand how to process it, prepare it for analysis, and then actually use to develop a project of your own and get feedback from a community of experts and students. We do this because our vision is to make bioinformatics accessible, not only to bioinformaticians, but for also biologists and clinicians because we think that this is a critical skill that all people involved in life science research 
and are learning about the application of molecular precision in medicine need to understand and use without the necessary complications that now exclude many non-experts and make conventional tasks extremely burdensome. So today, I wanted to introduce you to a program specifically designed for Africa that we call Bioinformatics for Genomic Medicine. In this program, you can learn about the role of genomic data in biomedical real-world examples. We will review literature, literature from chronic and acute infectious disease studies, seeing how the increasing significance of novel high-throughput data technologies like next-generation sequencing are contributing to the application of omics data analysis to both diagnostic and treatment selection challenges. We believe that as a result of this program, bioinformatics literacy is going to increase across all stages of data generation, processing, and utilization in critical decisions, making it an essential skill for lab technicians, researchers, and clinicians. So today, I'm going to talk about the program, different elements of the program, and answer any questions that you might have before joining this program on September 14th. Together with our partners, we designed the program for biologists, clinicians, and researchers. And we want to make sure that the students who are interested in advancing their understanding of big data and life sciences can join. Now, this is an introductory program, and it will not require many of the typical prerequisites for computational biology training. So you don't need to have any background in coding, bioinformatics, or biostatistics. Anyone with a basic familiarity with cell and molecular biology and an interest in the future of genomic medicine will be able to learn about and apply big data analytics tools to relevant curated data sets that we've prepared. And as a result of this short and focused and effective program, get a certificate of participation that you can use to leverage your future studies. So what we'll do in this program is we'll combine online sessions, self-guided study materials, and practical assignments for an immersive experience that has proven to be effective in our other omics logic programs that we have conducted over time. So whenever you are joining these programs, um, you start by creating a profile and uh, we have a free number of courses that you can try before you actually join the program. Uh, you can actually look at how the material is organized and centered around your personal progress. We use a point system to track your progress and allow you to see where you are compared to some of the other people that are joining these programs. Uh, we also highlight those students that have the majority uh, points and showcase their progress. So for anyone who's interested in exploring these materials, you can already sign up on edu.t-bio.info. Now, I want to introduce you today to a collaborator of ours, um, Adekunle um, Adulawayo, and uh, he's going to speak a little bit about his personal experience uh, with a program that he recently completed and speak about the significance of bioinformatics for uh, genomic medicine. But before we do, I wanted to make sure that I can answer any questions that you might have about the program that is coming up. Okay, so um, if you do have a question, uh, please uh, put it in the chat box and I will review all the questions one by one. Um, or raise your hand and um, we can unmute you to um, ask the question by audio. Okay, Abdul Rahman, um, would you like to ask a question? Okay. Okay, so if anyone is having trouble with technical issues like audio or um, asking the questions, uh, please use the chat. We can see what you're writing in the chat. Uh, and also we will have the recorded version at the end that you'll be able to review.
Okay, so um, I'm sorry about the audio. It seems like my audio is um, working. Okay. Okay, did anyone have any questions about this program? Reshmi, did you want to ask a question? Yes, so, so actually I'm a bioengineering student from India mm -hmm. of second year and I wanted to do some training courses. Shall I be able to do it now or right now or after some time? No, you don't have to have any previous training in bioinformatics itself. It is very useful to have some basic terminology about cell and molecular biology. Uh, but once you've completed that, you are definitely welcome to join the program. We work with you individually to make sure that the material is understandable. And if you're facing any challenges, we'll be uh, happy to support and answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you, sir. Yep, thank you. Okay, so if there are any other questions that you have, please put them in the chat box. We'll be answering them again. Um, and Adekuni, I wanted to invite you uh, to share your presentation. Um, just a brief uh, background for Adekuni. He is a faculty at Leeds City University in Nigeria, and he has recently completed an omics logic training program and will share a little bit of his personal perspective. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Oh, great. Thank you, Elio, for having me. Um, I want to welcome everyone here, and um, I want to appreciate the opportunity to take us on this journey quickly. OK, so um, my name is Ade Kunle Adeluoye. I'm a faculty from um, Leeds City University here in Nigeria and also double as the project lead for undergraduate research and knowledge acquisition. And so this afternoon, I would want to talk a little bit about bioinformatics and the big data science, as well as the new challenges and opportunities that it presents. So um, medicine and the field of diagnostic practice are both rapidly changing. Considerable technological advances coupled with um, rap a rapid expanding knowledge, which allows clinical laboratories to provide more information than ever before, is responsible for this. And that has ushered in the omics science era. In this era, following the sequencing of the human genome that was completed in the year 2001, rapid advances in no um, knowledge applicable to patient care of course constantly as the molecular basis for constitutional and somatic diseases are elucidated along with targets for more effective treatment. These has brought in things like um, personalized uh, medical practice. So apparently the combination of new knowledge regarding the molecular basis of disease and the novel technology. Welcome to the cum zone. Only come inside anime. However, the next important component that needs equal if not much more attention now is skilled professionals that are able to respond adequately to these opportunities and challenges. And as we know, analytic approaches have advanced significantly in recent years. Laboratories uses a variety of methods to detect mutations and other genomic abnormalities. And some of these procedures include the Sanger sequencing, the pyro sequencing, allele specific amplification, multiplex methods such as SNP, SMP arrays, and um, you know, a number of other procedures that characterizes tumors for mutations, as well as you know, emerging infectious diseases. Uh, one typical example that comes to mind would be the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. However, the development of the next generation sequencing platforms that address the speed, cost, and throughput needs of the clinical laboratory settings has paved the way for a new era in genomics and its application across various fields. So the immense amount of complex data that are generated by next generation, generation sequencing instrumentations has, um, you know, however, meant a challenge to laboratories and healthcare institutions, requiring concomitant investments and advances in informatics and laboratory systems that are able to handle this data. 
So the big data challenges are bioinformatics. Of course, the interpretation of the process data is also a challenge, requiring multiple steps and um, informatic tools that are used in tandem to generate a final result from the raw data. Collectively, these software tools are called the bioinformatics and are the critical part of sample analysis and generation of results. As we uh, enter into the era of genomic yeah. science, uh, in which the incorporation of genomic information becomes a routine part of medical care, all medical I professionals, especially biomedical scientists, uh, and uh, you know, physicians, you we need a basic education in bioinformatics. Hi, Ariola, can you hear me? Hello? Hey, uh, Adikunle, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you, Mohit. I don't know if he's able to hear you or not. Yeah, the, I'm not able to see his screen and I think he should, if he can do the full screen. Okay, sorry everyone. Um, we're having a little uh, technical challenge here with uh, having this presentation from Adekunli, um, maybe because his internet connection is not so great. Um, but we do appreciate um, his uh, attempt at showing the screen. Uh, maybe in the meantime, I could switch back and uh, talk a little bit more um, about what we plan to offer. Okay, so let me share my screen. Again, the, um, the significance, I think, of genomic medicine is uh, clear to many of us that are participating in research and are learning about life sciences. More and more publications are abound with next generation sequencing data that describes all levels of regulation from genomic to transcriptomic to epigenomic, metagenomic, all of this omic data has specific processing pipelines and has to be interpreted in very specific ways to make sense of this kind of data. So what we wanted to do in this program is actually package several of these basic topics into a very short and condensed program that we think many of you will be able to benefit from. So the program will start on September 14th. And we will have three sessions, hands-on sessions, interactive, and where you will be able to ask any questions, supported by online asynchronous curriculum that you can follow, where we will review next generation sequencing, how can bioinformatics is, uh, how is bioinformatics applied to biomedical studies, and what is the future of genomic medicine in the era of COVID-19. So what we'll do is uh, briefly explain what these different topics will cover. In uh, the first one, we will talk about the history of omics data and its significance, review uh, what the program is going to be about and introduce you to some of the resources that we will provide. And as a result of this program, uh, of this session, you will be able to start thinking about the different types of data in your own uh, area of research and uh, training. Um, and be able to formulate questions uh, from a biological perspective that could be answered with such data sets. Now, it's important to understand that many of these types of uh, data sets are used to study a variety of different clinical conditions uh, for both diagnostics and therapeutics uh, development and accuracy improvement. And so we will review several examples where all of these different methods are going to be important in terms of the logic of how they connect together and produce the right kinds of outputs. When we talk about omics data, the first step is the processing and the integration of this kind of data. And we see um, how cellular condition and variation at the DNA, RNA, and even metagenomic level plays a role uh, in many diseases when pathogens and microorganisms in our bodies and the environment we live in uh, could be studied to understand the risks that they pose to acute infection disease and chronic risks that actually destabilize the immune system and lead to many uh, clinical factors. But when we look at it from a da data perspective, 
we are faced with another challenge. All of these different data types come in a variety of formats. And so the first thing that we will do is actually understand how different formats could be processed and structured so that the data is ready for analysis. And that process is called processing. So the processing of data is taking the raw input data sets and converting them into structured formats that we could later on study. So then we will have another session to discuss the precision medicine and application to virology. Uh, we'll talk about several um, types of infectious diseases, um, Ebola virus, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so all of these uh, pandemics and epidemics that happen around us, how do we actually understand these uh, threats and their emergence as well as the spread at the genomic level? So how do we understand the genomic composition of viral communities? How do we study the mutations? How can we link those mutations to phenotypes? So we've prepared a few um, examples, case studies. One of them is uh, Ebola virus outbreak in 2014, 2016. We know that these outbreaks have continuously um, taken place um, over the, the past uh, several decades. And it's important to understand what is the variability at the genomic level that helps us uh, both detect, prevent, and um, prepare interventions uh, for this important disease. And we'll do this based on a particular uh, uh, set of publications that actually characterizes uh, the history of how uh, through the sequencing efforts of many different organizations, uh, the viral um, spread was tracked, the different strains were detected and characterized, the biology of the virus was understood at a much greater level, and as a result, uh, new interventions were designed based on particular understanding of how the disease works and what kinds of disease progression uh, changes happen at both the virus and the host level. We'll also talk about COVID-19, and discuss how sequencing has changed our understanding of these novel coronavirus outbreaks and what we can learn from the current outbreak in uh, around the world, uh, but also the emergence of those outbreaks related to different types of hosts and interaction between humans and other um, animals around us. Uh, we'll also talk about infectious diseases that are uh, causing chronic conditions that turn to cancer and um, a continuous inflammation that actually um, results in hundreds of thousands of cases of cancer every year. And some of these infectious uh, agents are actually um, detected in uh, fairly early stages. So our ability to detect and treat um, that process is critical for a healthier future um, everywhere around us. Finally, on September 18th, we'll talk about genomic medicine in and post COVID-19. So as a result of these outbreaks, and particularly infectious disease outbreaks, we've seen the adoption and the reliability as well as the value of genomics in many different scenarios. As we think for the future, and as this type of data becomes more accessible and easier to incorporate into a clinical workflow, we have to be able to um, both analyze and interpret the findings from these types of sequencing studies. So we hope that as a result of these three sessions, um, you will know uh, many different types of data and have a, a sense of a few examples of how you can apply this data to study uh, infectious diseases and chronic diseases, as well as ask specific basic research questions of the publicly available data sets that are becoming more and more rich with data. So we're going to take a look at not only the interactive sessions, but we'll also provide you access with some coursework and projects that you can review. Uh, these are asynchronous courses, so you can actually join those courses without participating in the program or by participating in the program they will be organized in such a fashion that you will be benefiting from completing the coursework before joining the interactive sessions. Um, as I mentioned before, this is available for uh, different levels of students, uh, faculty, and clinicians. 
So we have a wide range of uh, backgrounds that we see from our participants. Um, uh, they uh, all benefit from completing the basic coursework as well as then working on project examples. And here you can see the Ebola virus and the novel coronavirus projects. Um, as you kind of get access to these different data sets, you can then actually develop your own independent project that you could uh, work on uh, for your research objectives. So I think that um, this is an important part of not only um, application of basic research, but as I mentioned, the clinical biomedical studies that have a, a tremendous significance for the future of medicine, as well as uh, biodefense and uh, surveillance of emerging infectious diseases. Now, at the end of the program, you are offered a certificate of completion or a certificate of excellence. And uh, in this program, we are hoping to provide you with a real uh, hands-on view of what a program like this, a training program like this can mean for you. Um, we've seen students with minimal bioinformatics background come out of these programs ready to um, apply their skills to a project. Uh, and we have a supporting community that is working on different types of data sets, different types of projects uh, where um, you might be able to benefit from interacting with them. Uh, so just a couple of examples and then I'll um, leave some more time for uh, questions as well. Um, uh, Emeka uh, Patrick Chukwuka is a laboratory specialist at the Maternity and Children's Hospital in Al Mubaraz. Um, he has been with us uh, for a number of different programs, and we've seen how he was able to, first of all, apply the tools and the skills that he's acquired to uh, one particular uh, type of a project and then expand his interest and in now applying these skills to many different areas, as well as uh, Topi Okitaki, um, who is a principal research officer at the biotechnology department in NIOMR in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, who uh, was able to benefit from both the courses that he has completed and the tools that we provide during the program. So an important part of what we do is not only provide you with theoretical content or tell you how to do this on your computer. Many of these data sets are huge. You actually have to rely on a comprehensive cloud infrastructure that allows you to process large data sets and potentially do this many times to actually get to a meaningful outcome. Uh, now, some of the participants of our previous programs have not only learned this in an academic perspective, uh, Olga Udartseva, for example, is a research affiliate, a postdoc at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. Um, she was able to complete a program uh, but also enhance the uh, projects that she is working on in her research, uh, preclinical research studies, um, and think about the practical applications to cancer patients that she interacts with. So I think that, um, again, this is not only for um, doing basic research and maybe improving your skills, but actually applying this in the context of genomic medicine as well. Um, so at this point, I wanted again to open this for questions. I see that there's um, a couple of people. Okay, so um, for the uh, course price, I will actually walk you through um, how to join, register, set up your account, and see what courses are included in the program. Uh, the program itself is not free, but we are hoping that we made it as affordable as possible, um, even in Africa. So the cost is actually uh, $10. Um, so let me go back to that slide um, uh, with the pricing. Uh, so you can see that this is a one week online program uh, that provides you with access to some of the synchronous courses that I've mentioned. You can access those courses independently or a part of this program. Uh, you will also get one-on-one -on -one Q and A and assistance throughout this program. Our objective is to really reach out to academic institutions uh, that can make this available to their students. So we're actively looking for uh, partners in Nigeria and Africa in general that would be able to introduce this at their university and develop joint academic programs to offer it to students. Uh, the cost for this particular introduction 
introductory program, I think is very affordable, uh, $10. And if you register this week, uh, you will actually be able to get it for only $8. So there's a, an early bird discount there as well. Um, if, you, if anyone else has any questions, you're welcome to post those in the chat box. What I wanted to do is show you actually how to register and um, uh, set up your account. Um, so if everyone can uh, follow me to this website, edu.t-bio.info, I will show you how you can access the free coursework as well as how you can um, register for the program. And thank you, Beepster, for um, posting that link. So please let me know once you are here um, on this website, edu.t-bio.info. Okay, if you've uh, reached this site, please type in yes. I will um, just keep it on for a couple of minutes to make sure that everybody can uh, join me there. Okay, and the second link is a link for pre-registration. Okay, great, thank you. All right. All right, so I'll just wait until a couple of you um, are here. Now, if you go under events in the main menu, you will see here Bioinformatics Genomics Africa. So please navigate to this link. And again, if, uh, all right, great. So more people are getting there, that's excellent. So what you will see once you navigate to Bioinformatics for Genomics in Africa, uh, you will see the homepage for this program. And here um, you have this button to register for membership. So actually from this button, you'll be able to complete your registration. So there is a link for pre-registration, but that pre-registration actually only gives us um, the information about you to reach out to you. Okay, and uh, for Aweli, um, decide to go through the courses and sometimes I copy out the link to see if I can access it on my modules app to make it easier for me, but then the courses there are written in a language I can't understand. Um, again, you do need to have some basic background in cell and molecular biology if it's a terminology issue. If there are particular ch challenges um, in access of a particular course, please do let us know, Willie. Okay, so here you can either sign up um, using a username and email um, and add your name to your profile, or since I already have an account, I can log in. So you do have to have an account uh, before you can uh, complete your registration. So here I'm just going to uh, log in with my email. Okay, and for those of you that are facing any kinds of technical challenges with accessing this, uh, we are aware of uh, some problems that might happen because of slow um, internet or um, things like that. And so we have thought about that as well. So please do let us know. Our goal is to make this as accessible as possible. So any feedback is actually helpful. Okay, again, I will um, you click here, register for membership, and uh, here you will see what is included in your membership registration. So you can have a discount code. You get this discount code if you fill out the pre-registration uh, form, and the pre-registration form is down here at the bottom. So you just fill out your information right here, and you will receive an email from marketing at pine.bio and um, that email will contain a discount code um, and that code is going to be available up until the, um, the end of this week. 
Okay, and here you can complete your payment. We understand that uh, some payments is going to be restricted for international payments. And so we also have an alternative way and uh, um, Adekunle is helping many of the participants that, that are interested in registering uh, using some uh, payment in Africa, a bank in Africa. So please do let us know uh, if you are having challenges uh, completing the payment. There's a pay stack option. Okay, so what is in the program. Let's go back to the program and I'll kind of give you an overview. So we already have a number of people that have completed their registration. We only have several um, more uh, uh, spots left that we hope will be uh, interesting to those of you that want to join over the course of the next two weeks. The programs are organized by combining coursework and projects that you can have access to and explore some of these topics in greater detail. Um, you also have a series of sessions that are described um, under your, um, okay. So here are the courses that we will go through, Introduction to Bioinformatics, Introduction to Genomics, and Introduction to Metagenomics. Uh, you also can see the full syllabus of the program right here. And on the syllabus, you'll see the specific dates where we will be meeting. Um, and this is going to always happen between 6.30 p.m and 8 p.m. Uh, Western African time. Uh, you can see that for each session, there's an adjacent course that you can complete. And as you join, you will also have access to a forum. So we use this forum to interact and discuss any technical issues or questions that you might have. Now, there are some free courses here as well. Um, you're welcome to explore those as well. You can just navigate to the courses tab and you will see a number of free courses that you can take before you join the program. So this is a brief overview of the program schedule. Again, this is the link that you can explore um, in your own free time, share it with your um, academic institution and students uh, that you might have. Uh, this course will provide you with access to our interactive big data analysis platform. So I'll just briefly show you what that looks like, as well as insight into um, some parts of these uh, different types of analysis that we'll use in the program uh, to explain how the analysis works. So one of the things that we will do is look at the somatic mutations um, in the content of uh, mutation variant column. So here you will see that all of the practical assignments are going to be available even for those that have minimal background in coding and big data analysis. For each step of the way, you will be able to learn about the specific analysis that is being performed, uh, you'll also see the logic of analysis, uh, why different types of methods are used or what kind of objective. As you build your pipeline, you'll learn about each one of the methods and can read more about the relevant publications that are included. And then also understand the inputs and outputs of each one of your pipelines. So here's an example, you will get a file that you can download and then open on your computer um, and understand what are some of these somatic mutations that we were able to do. We will also review sections related to phylogenetic analysis as well as um, evolution um, and viral uh, quasi-species. So here you can see some examples as well. This, by the way, is a link that you can also take a look at. This is our research platform that we will be using, uh, but it leverages a lot of the open source um, type material. So here you can see an example from a study related to um, the origins of SARS-CoV-2. This introductory uh, program will be just one week long. It's a very brief program for us to get started with, and we will announce some future courses um, after this program is completed. 
So here you can see how we can leverage uh, the translation from uh, nucleotide sequences to amino acid sequences and uh, study codon and amino acid variation uh, using multiple types of phylogenetic analysis um, and also understand how we can study the outputs of different types of phylogenetic analysis methods um, using um, uh, tree space. And then we will look at different types of outputs that include some basic as well as interactive overview of what is in our data. So here's an interactive output from the pipeline. Um, here, for example, you can see uh, the different types of coronaviruses compared to each other, MERS, SARS, COVID-19, and beta coronaviruses. Uh, it's important to understand not only the sequence variation, but also the impact that the sequence variation has on specific, uh, on specific uh, proteins. So we will do a detailed study on how we can analyze such raw data, how to find this raw data, how to analyze it, how to look at the results, and then how to interpret the results from a biological or a biomedical perspective. So as you go through some of these coursework, uh, some of these courses that are included here, these are the types of examples that we will review with a detailed explanation of the methods, as well as some practical assignments that you can practice on your own. What are the things that you already have access to before the training commences? So yes, there is an email that will go out to you after you have completed your registration. You do have access to these courses already that you can start learning from. What will happen during the actual um, uh, sessions for the program is we will have an interactive overview. And in that interactive overview, we will go into greater detail for some of the methods that we've discussed. Okay, another resource that we will cover and that you will have access to um, after registering is our coding platform. So on this coding platform, you will be able to understand some of the methods that we have discussed, but at a code level. So you're probably familiar with R and Python. Uh, both of these are widely used in biomedical research, biostatistical analysis, and uh, machine learning. And so we will have a few examples where you will be able to do such um, activities like sequence analysis and visualization of analyzed data using R and Python. So I'll just give you a brief example of what these courses look like. You'll have a tutorial on how to set up uh, your environment and load the data. Um, and then we'll actually have, again, access to cloud-based tools where you actually perform a uh, simple modification uh, to the code that you can uh, check on how it works. So for example, here you can see that I loaded a data set, got some output, and now I can actually uh, change uh, the next one. Again, run it. This is actual, uh, um, actual, um, you can see output from R. So if I use the same uh, example link here, it's not going to work because this is supposed to be in Excel. Uh, so you can see how just copying and pasting is not going to work. You actually have to uh, practice and uh, understand the code. So you can see success running code and so forth. And so this is also a resource that is included in this program subscription. Again, the program itself will last for uh, one week, but it's a great way to start learning about these different skills, even if you are just a beginner um, or um, if you are already doing research in microbiology, oncology, uh, biomedical informatics, uh, bioinformatics, computational biology. Uh, we've had many different participants from around the world that have joined these programs. Now, after this program is over, we're going to have more comprehensive programs that you're also welcome to join as well. These programs <clears throat> as you are usually organized by different types of data or different type of specializations. 
So if you explore the site in general, you'll see other types of programs that are coming up, uh, like a program on metagenomics uh, or bioinformatics for infection diseases or transcriptomics. These are much more in-depth programs. They are typically around two weeks to a month. Uh, they are designed to um, work on independent research projects. So you can see here um, in this particular example, this program is going to be starting uh, on September 14th as well. Uh, this program is going to have a lot more information. It's going to be much longer. Um, but we were, um, you know, happy to um, invite you to uh, those programs as well. So I'm just going to give you a couple of links where you can explore uh, some of these other programs as well. So this is an omics logic transcriptomics program for those of you that are more familiar with these types of next generation sequencing technologies. And again, we also would recommend thinking about this, not just as a theoretical certificate program, but as a program that allows you to develop an independent project. Um, so uh, you can see some of our participants from previous programs have developed project, uh, research projects of their own. Um, and you can see here, um, what is the process that we go through for those that are interested to apply the skills that they have learned to develop an independent project? And here's some project examples uh, that you can see from our previous participants. Okay, so at this moment, again, I'll open it back up for any questions um, or comments that you might have um, about the program itself. Um, or some of the tools that we've described here. Um, you're welcome to submit your pre-registration for this particular program to get a discount code and benefit from a discount um, for this week, um, or um, just register um, directly. And if you need any assistance with uh, completing your payment, uh, you can reach out to Ada Kunli uh, by email and also be in touch with our support team uh, that is working to make this program available. Kunli, if you don't mind uh, sharing your email, also if people have any questions, they could reach out to you um, and hear back about um, what their questions might be. Uh, Ilya, I wanted to add something. Uh, can you please go back to the organization page once? Uh, there was a question that we had in, um, the Telegram group, and I just wanted to point something out. Uh, for everyone who had been uh, telling me that, you know, they are seeing, uh, if you go to the home uh, one, Celia, thank you, uh, that you are seeing that, you know, there is a registration for membership even, even after you have signed up. So that button is something um, which will be there. And if you have access to the forum, the courses, and all the other aspects of this organization page, that means that it is good. But even then, if you're having any problem with the access, let me know because I know that Paul and a few others were having some problems. And also there is one more thing that I would want to point out is signing up to the EDU site with one email ID. So your one email ID is your identity. It could be anyone. So if you want to change something, you can let me know so that we can do it right before the program starts. And once you, uh, use that email ID, it would be used for all of the platforms that you will have access to, like the EDU platform uh, from which you can access the genomic medicine uh, course and then the server platform. So please make sure that you're using the email ID uh, which you're paying for. That is the correct one. And if you want to change it, just let me know. So thank you, Ilya. That's all. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Bipsa. Um, and also thank you everyone for joining today. We will have the recording of this webinar for you available. Um, again, we're sorry for some of the technical issues that we've had um, and we're happy to stay in touch. So please let us know if you have any other questions.